Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Uh, thank you for tuning in again. And uh, tonight I am going to start a completely new topic. I'm talking, uh, talking about uh, what I call, I call the liquid consonants. And if you search for liquid consonant, uh, the uh, scholars will give you a complete different set of explanation. But I will explain it from a very human point of view. Uh, once again, in my research has done uh, I have been doing it for more than 20 years is a female point of view and from Asia and uh, I look at this so-called liquid consonant I think they are really representing liquid the alphabet I'm talk about will be L M uh, N and also the uh, alphabet R okay and um, uh, but before I start today's topic I want to fill in a little bit for last week last week you know a friend of mine from Yemen who now live in Egypt actually contacted me and she told me that uh, she had some contribution to make regarding uh, the sash that uh, the, the patriarchs used to uh, indicate their lineage to God the lineage uh, of aristocracy aristocracy and actually the Arabs uh, have the same thing you know uh, that they did for thousands of years. I want to show you a, a video of that, okay? Um, okay, one second. Okay, first of all, I want to show the um, my slides from the beginning. And this is the basket starfish. And uh, I propose that we all share the single, uh, this, uh, this, a single core. And then uh, we do not uh, separate in uh, different family trees. And because if we look at us different uh, from a different family tree, we will usher in human hierarchy. So uh, the old view of all the uh, Western scholars, you know, mainly men, you know, uh, their, their, their way of uh, dividing things, you know, needed to be changed, I think. Uh, my way of looking at it is uh, provides a more uh, equalized, you know, uh, view towards our human history as a whole. Okay, so once again, um, this is what I talked about last week. You know about how the uh, umbilical cord uh, position has been gradually hidden, and then the men started to use a physical thread to wear them to show their lineage to God. And of course, you know, it shows that um, uh, if you have watch you know my past for 54th episode and you will see that the H always represent that thread you know from the very beginning so it shows that uh, it take the it took the women's uh, position away so from that time on the the men became the heir of that those lines and then it started the hierarchy and unfortunately it also started our caste system and I also show you all this writing this is Chinese the uh, the sound is seen or same okay and this is uh, the same as seen in uh, uh, um, in Egyptian hieroglyph and they just put in different way and also this is in ancient uh, uh, Masnet what uh, you found in southern Yemen in ancient time all this represent the S sound and it all represent the thread itself and other than the H okay but I show you and um, they you have to look at them all trailing around like a thread and then then I show you from the West, you know, starting from this uh, statue of Apollo, you will see that the Western world uh, always wear that ribbon showing that their special lineage. Now only the royalty in Europe will be able to wear this. And this is a very uh, distinctive sign that they show themselves of a special lineage. And then in the East, of course, you know, this blue blood also uh, adopted by the gods, you know, from the gods to the Brahmin uh, caste. And then, of course, you know, in the Indian continent, it start the caste system. All the men become, uh, in the uh, Brahmin family, become a special uh, class, caste. And then uh, all the others, you know, actually create a lot of inequality in human being. But I also show you the tradition still carry on in our uh, symphony sesh. And then it actually stands for synchronize and symphony, uh, a ribbon that you still wear when you show your political view when you agreed on something okay so 
now I'm going to show you all the uh, the Arab world also have that. This is what my friend sent me. Um, she told me that it's called Habwa or Habia, and then of course it started with an H also. Look at how this uh, gentleman wear it. This is a, a Bedouin tribe, you know, from the south of Yemen in the desert. Now of course when I lived there, I also learned this habit, but I didn't know that it was made, you know, originally looked like that. I was amused you know because I actually uh, learned from the man we always you know tie the ribbon around uh, and, and, and use it as a seat as you will see later but I want to show you all these H signs also this is ancient uh, uh, Hebrew this is uh, Hungarian uh, runic this is Chinese high this is H in uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph and this is ancient um, Sumerian so you will see that these are all carry each sound and carry somehow have the concept of trailing around they were the earliest writing of you know uh, of the thread okay and but uh, since the uh, program do not uh, support the video in YouTube I have to show you directly from YouTube okay just give me one second yes here it is Okay. See the way he wears it. And when I was in the desert, when I was in the mountain with the Arabs, I always use a scarf to tie myself around so I can sit down and have something to lean on at the back, you know, so it's actually very comfortable. They have a special term for it, Anna B. Hapwa. Just say that I am in the Hapwa. It is a very special thing, it's not just any other scarf, okay? <laughs> okay, see, uh, because of time, you know, I will stop it. I will stop it from here, okay? Okay. I will continue on with my uh, slides. Okay, one second. Okay, so this is what my friend told me. The hapwa is woven of a wool and a cotton joined together. Uh, obviously, they still follow the pagan belief that, you know, everything is not just one. They mix two together. This is also very distinctive from the Jewish habit of never mix wool with linen. So you will see that the beginning of a patriarchic, uh, patriarchic uh, religion, a mono uh, male uh, religion, always uh, uh chase to the pure lineage you know so they didn't even have that but this Arab you know uh, uh, scarf you know I shouldn't call it scarf you know the strap you know actually still uh, follow the ancient tradition of having two material together so, and so they date back to more than 3,000 years ago or maybe more in the Arab Arabian Peninsula and it is respected it's a very respected way of sitting um, of course you know uh, I'm sure that in ancient times that strap you wear across your shoulder is actually a sign of your distinctive uh, lineage so it is uh, not everybody can wear it not like now you know now when I lived in Yemen I actually thought that it's just a very clever improvised way of sitting down you know in the desert I didn't know that you know it was actually a line of this uh, a sign of a symbol of distinctive uh, lineage okay so my friend also told me it is a symbol and evidence of masculinity and also chivalry in high status so it actually proved my point that all those uh, uh, um, straps or sash or whatever people wear across their shoulder were a very very ancient tradition that the men invented to, to show their special lineage instead of the female umbilical cord okay so uh, I will continue um, in the next slide now
Okay, so uh, I start with today's uh, topic, the liquid consonants. You know, you can Google the liquid consonant, you know, you will see a lot of different ways of looking at things, uh, talking about the, uh, the, the consonant L and R, but I will tell you that this L, M, N and R are all water related in the real world, okay? And then the O, P, Q, uh, somehow uh, a little bit in, uh, the R stand in between the, the, the two, and also the S, they all related to the source, you know, so I will explain to you uh, gradually. And, and, and I want to point out the fact that, you know, I, uh, I do this research because I use a different lens from Asia. I'm a female, so I'm definitely not using a, a Eurocentric lens to see everything. And then uh, because I look at things in a different timeline, because most of the linguists, you know, look at mainly the things, you know, in a linear way. And and for, for them, a P change to B, a B change to, 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 to B, everything is a linear. But I look at everything as cyclical, okay? So every, uh, when I look at things differently you know it brings in different understanding but the interesting things that no matter what I look at it when I compare all these ancient uh, uh, languages and regions they all seem to show the same cultural belief and the same mental concept since ancient time okay so I will show you uh, now uh, but before I go to the L M N and the R as water I want to explain a little bit more again why the O P Q and S is uh, also you know lined up with all this uh, once again I told you uh, when I was talking about the letter A uh, I told you that the Latin system A B C D E every single alphabet is in its position for a reason A was you know with the representation of the action the unseen energy B was actually coming from the idea of the food which really move uh, physical movement and 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 C which uh, actually uh, came from the, the old song of Gam, actually uh, holds the number three. So uh, uh, every single alphabet is in its position for a certain reason. So this L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, they all lined up because for the ancient, they all related with water. And somehow, you know, because the interchange of concepts, sometimes they also, uh, you know, uh, interchange with the thread, the making of the thread. But today I'm concentrating on the water part, okay? But um, as I said, I will show you the O, P, Q and S first, okay? It has definitely a lot to do with the mouth and the eye, which for the ancient is always the origin of some Something, you know, that's why they always call the eye of a, a, a well and the eye of a spring um, and also uh, because of, of the line, you know, in, in their head, the concept of lines in their head, it always, you know, linked to the thread they, um, uh, as a first human technology that we started to dominate. So uh, now I will show you one um, very early uh, uh, mural in a um, very ancient, uh, the oldest synagogue in the world called Dura Europo Synagogue, somewhere in uh, Syria. Uh, these uh, murals are uh, at least, you know, in the second or the third century, but um, contrary to what you believe that uh, you think the synagogue would never have images, but obviously at those time in a place uh, like that, in a border town, uh, people are very, very active and then they always use pictures on the wall murals to, to uh, teach people who cannot read or write, okay? So you can see that this is a mural showing, you know, Moses striking the rock and then it become the uh, spring and then the, the 12, you know, tributary all run into each camp of the 12 different tribes, okay? So you will see that this is the mental image, you know, like an O, like a hole there with the water running out. This is the original uh, mental concept of uh, people for for a long long time thousands of years ago okay so uh, now you will see that uh, this is you can call it a pictograph but you can also see it it begins to take form of an alphabet okay because um, uh, the Latin adopted this uh, also is actually the word as um, the uh, the the eye and the and the face, I mean the mouth and the face. And of course, you know, ophthalmology,
images or all this or also to link with the eye so the mouth and the eye actually are somehow you know interchangeable in Chinese also sometimes you know we draw this uh, a, a circle with a dot right so you can always explain it as a well or as a, a sun as a origin of something okay so this represents the all the all sound but interestingly in Chinese we also have a very interesting word oh um, whenever there is a hole as you can see this is um, the hands you know uh, worshipping this mysterious thing inside a hole a cover that that express us to us as a whole but we also we only put the water part right next to it to further specify that this is something like a bay you know so whenever you 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 go to the delta and that's called an o in in, in old chinese okay so exactly the same way as you call a hole uh, you know that's why it's os and o right there they all pointed to an original origin of a hole okay so um regarding the p um this is ancient um uh, um, uh, Hebrew and then you will see that you know it represents either the pe or the fe sound and of course you know in pe in Hebrew it's the mouth and fe in ancient um, Arabic is also the mouth and it's just a change of the consonant sound the, the uh, sound shifting but of course you know if you look at it you, if you look at it as a mouth itself and the Greek word p actually means the fountain as as you can see you know these are also interchangeable and of course the P also changed to F you know and when you go to the Latin fonts already become the fountain so you will see that this change is very very consistent one culture used the P the other culture will use the F this is very very consistent and I, when I go to the East you know to Chinese you know we also have this can you see the water flowing down for us it has the sound of Fong Fong means uh, uh, an abundance of flowing water exactly like when you say F-O-U-N-T font in, in English okay Which which come from the the Latin word fonts is all a water source okay so um, the word actually uh, later on you know uh, become like this and it has a lot to do with childbirth as well as you can see as uh, see um, it has a lot to do with the flowing of water the woman is always the source of life okay so they have very very subtle uh, connection you have to slow down you have to type in YouTube and watch this again uh, because I don't think uh, I just mentioned over it you need time to digest okay you can type in YouTube to watch this all, all over again just type in my program name basket starfish our language core okay this is the 55th episode okay so when it comes to Q O P Q now I'm coming to Q Q as you can see from the form you know you all it instead of water I can also show you in form of the thread and this is what the Latin will call quelle quelle means the source as you can see you can re uh, refer to this as a source you can also refer to the ball of yarn as the source okay it is exactly the the, the form of that so um, the ancient actually copy from everything around them they don't just invent things without a base okay and then in Chinese I look at it you know we have a word Q look at this, this is Q okay this is Q Q um, it actually means the hole and opening or the key to something exactly like the source okay so uh, when I look at uh, the dictionary further to explain this complicated part it actually tells me it is the flow of light so basically it is the concept of a hole and the upper part is uh, is the writing of a hole so it's a hole of things flowing down and then uh, if you compare this to this form of Q and then the Chinese song of Q you will think that we are actually speaking English okay so um, once again I actually really believe that we share a very very common core since ancient time actually it is grammar that separates us so all the linguists put so much attention in the grammar is actually separate us more okay and and by showing you all these common words you will see that how close the concept were since ancient time okay and how about the s now o p q you know um, and s okay about the sources all these words 
and you will look at that this is the Greek writing of S this is also a copy of that if you keep pulling this you will see that this is uh, coming out from the from the source okay from the hole right there or the other thing is the as the curving form like a river and it is actually you know become the the the, the acronym of the, the the word source okay so the uh, ancient put a lot of attention in the first alphabet you can understand why okay so if I give you all the English word you will see that O for origin P for Pate, which is the, the, the chief, the, the, the father, and also the fawn, which is a mutation, uh, the fountain, or the Q is for the creator. So it's only you do not uh, spell it with a Q, but you can actually have it in queen, okay? Queen is actually the, the, the direct real line of the bloodline in the ancient time, not the king, okay? So, and also S will be the source. So I give you all these words so you can understand why all these words represent you know the the source you know in this lining okay and this line lining up i mean okay now i can go to the um l m n and 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 r okay so uh, again you know but i want to we uh, confirm a little bit more about the the similar similarity in writing the hieroglyph had this as ma uh, for them it is the pupil of the eye okay and seeing itself when you draw an eye out is all ma the chinese we also have the same writing and then now if we write it like this we have the sound of mo you know for us it's the eye and for that uh, we have the sound of mean for us it is this it is the face okay the face is where the eye is but look at how the Egyptian write the face you know this is exactly the same thing that they write how can they be so similar if we do not communicate or, or share with each other we borrow from each other no one can invent anything out of the blue okay so um and Sanskrit uh, this is a word mukia mukia actually is means face so all this word either it means the eye or the face but you can actually see them very well from the pictograph itself if Sanskrit Mukia and you will see the Greek Marti Marti or uh, the sound comes back here Marti is the eye sometimes you can uh, they can talk about the eye sometimes it talk about a bad eye an evil eye so if you go to Greece you will see a lot of charms like this this is to to keep you safe and then if you go a little bit to Turkey you know it become a round shape it goes back to this way so it really depends on which shape you take so each culture you know take on a form but it already it, it always share the original concept okay so this is the Chinese we also pay a lot of attention to this eye but um, we look at the, all this circle but then when they are uh, Latin the Latin are very practical so they just draw this O as the O okay so this is the eye itself and then it also also means the mouth the source okay and all this word means the mouth and the face and that's why oculus also means the eye because it's already signified by the first alphabet and then uh, why is it ocular La oculari means you know hidden and not seen because in since ancient time when they try to vilify the other pair one eye is always the, the male eye good eye the other eye is always the female eye bad eye so they always give the the female a bad reputation so this oculary is something hidden obviously it's the other hole the other eye okay that's the more secret hole of the female so uh, I can show you this this is actually the O the ocular exactly the same meaning in Chinese which means secretive mysterious okay so now I go on to let you see the source and the flow and have you ever wondered how is why how is written like this? So I will show you why. And uh, first of all, uh, I compare the, uh, the the ancient writing of the of the ruler. Okay, this is ancient uh, Sumerian. This is Chinese. Somehow they seem to have the habit of having that flow coming out of from there. And then there is this little uh, uh, circle with the dot, which you know signify you know the the center or the hole or the source and then this is Ra of course in ancient Egyptian will be the sun god okay now uh, they teach you to look at it as the sun god of course easily you can look at the sun god but if I look at 
tell you to look at it as a source, as a fountain, as a spring, the female part, you can also see it, right? So uh, the, the sim more simple a symbol is, the more easily they can be manipulated. But now I want you to pay attention actually to the sound. Actually have Wang or Wang and W easily mutated to Ra or Ra mutated to W. Saying this, I don't mean, you know, which one is first. I just say that it just changed back and for forward, okay? Wa Ra and Va in, 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 in uh, Greek, you know? Greek, you know, there's a short way of saying the King Va like this, you know? You say Va, Ra, Wang, Va. And of course, it comes to the other line is the Ras in ancient uh, Hebrew and Resh in Arabic, Rex in, in, in Latin, Re in, in Spanish, Raja in, in uh, Sanskrit, and Royal, of course, in uh, English. So uh, this word is written like this because there's always a, a way to follow. The Greeks are is like this because they uh, develop it from the curve of a, a horn, you know, from the, from the ram, okay? And then how about a head with a flow? Yes, exactly. For the Latin, the R is actually something, an origin has something to flow out. So you can understand it as a river. But you can also understand as the head itself because the, the small letter of R is actually the real head because the head is always something to do to, with the R. And of course, you know, you will easily um, do that. And I will show you one more slide. So what... Can we really trust our eyes or our ears? So uh, just this word, you know, you will see this wong wong sound, but I show you the Chinese. If you look at the Chinese dictionary, it changed from wang huang to e even to the feng, okay? So why is it that it changed all the way to the feng as well? So it shows you that sound mutation doesn't follow the way the Western linguists really tell you. Because Chinese are not bound by the uh, alphabet, so we are very flexible. It shows that everything is possible. Thank you for watching.